Hi there, welcome to Odonet. Today I wanted to quickly go over the uh, ArcGIS generator for Yeoman that I put together a while ago. And I'll just kind of show you how you can quickly use this to get your applications up and running. So what's really cool uh, with this is that it's going to use Yeoman um, to go ahead and scaffold your application for you. Now if you've never used Yeoman before, uh, I suggest you go ahead and read up on it a little bit. But basically what you can do is you can install Yeoman and then you can install generators for Yeoman that let you go ahead and scaffold particular applications. There's generators for Angular and generators for a bunch of other applications out there. So once you've installed Yeoman, all you gotta do is uh, go to a folder that you want to use for application, type in yo arcgis-js-app, and uh, you're up and running. So let's check that out real quick. So if I come over here, so I've already, uh, let's create a folder here. Let's call this folder so test app. Let's go to CD into my test app here. So now I'm going to go and type in yo, and we'll get to these other commands here that you're seeing right now in a second. ArcGIS-JS-App. So once you type that in, uh, it's going to ask you a couple questions. So name of your application. It'll just use the folder name you're in for the app. You can leave that as default if you want, or give it a new name. Uh, Description for application, this is the default mark, my ArcGIS JS app, I'll leave that as default. And then version for the API, this is gonna go ahead and use Esri Slurp to download the um, Esri JavaScript files for you. And you can put your email in here, leave a blank. And it's gonna go ahead and start installing stuff. So it's gonna go ahead, it's gonna run the npm install and Bower install for you at the same time. So give this a second to run. Okay, so now the generator's gone ahead, it's finished uh, installing all the NPM files and the Bower files, so it installed all the Dojo bit for us, and it's gone, gone ahead and installed the uh, Esri Slurp to download the 3.14 files for us. So once you've done that, we can list out all the files here, and let's go ahead and uh, check this out in Vim real quick. So if you come over here, you have a, uh, a disk folder that's gonna have your app folder with the output for your application, and we've got all the other supporting libraries in here. And if you come to the source, come in here, you'll notice that we have a map here and everything's written in ES6. So the application you get with the generator is gonna go ahead and it's going to have a grunt file that will compile all this for you. So we've got a pretty cool grunt file here and it's loaded up with tons of stuff it even includes stuff for intern, testing. So we've got some, uh, then we've got a default initialized build, release, and dev. So let's just go over a couple of these real quick. So the default is going to go ahead and it's going to compile your ES6 code out to uh, regular JavaScript. It's going to copy a few files and do the stylus and everything. So if you run grunt dev, Come over here. A to A to dist for our localhost. And let's check out the files here. Okay, so we've got a really basic application here. Now, if we look at the source, you'll see that it's pulling in uh, all the individual files. We've got our components in here. And we're also pulling in all the individual uh, dojo files that are needed as well. All right, perfect. Let's cancel that. Okay, so let's say you want to add a new component to your application. So you can go ahead and you can uh, type in yo app ArcGIS components. And let's add a new component and call it uh, my component. All right, cool. So now once you've done that, you get a component and you get the status for it and you also get a test case for it as well. Let's look at the test cases real quick. So if we come over here and let's switch this out to uh, node modules. Oops, wrong one. Let's do this. So node modules, test intern. Oh, I got to run grunt dev. Forgot about that. 
Oops, forgot to run grunt dev on grunt on this one. So let's run grunt. So now let's build it out. Run grunt dev again. And there we go. So we have one failed test. And this test is only failing because I'm not, I uh, have a test for a map ID. However, I'm not using it in this application. So I'd have to go in here and fix that particular test. But if we come down here, you see that we have a result for uh, a test for the new component that we added, the my comp component, and just a simple test to make sure the component's valid. So you have intern testing built in. And if we also have our application that we have, so let's come over here. So our application is still running. And what's really cool, you'll notice that when the application started, I have my live reload automatically enabled. And that's because the grunt generator, uh, the Omen generator for this, comes with a grunt task that injects the live reload script right into your page. So if I came to the application, let's split this here. Let's make a quick update to a file. And we'll make a just add a comment. Do that, and you see it's going to recompile the application for us over here. And the test app is going to get reloaded in a second here, and that's because it's uh, hooked up to live reload to watch for any changes. So that's really cool. Okay, so let's go ahead and show one more really neat feature of using the generator and the grunt files come with it. So if we come back into Vim here, and let's look at the way the application is structured, right? So you can see in the source we have an app uh, folder, this folder right here. We have all our, all our components, helpers, models, and application files under it. So in the app folder, we have a package.json folder. Now in the package.json folder, what we're doing is we have a, a property called dojo build. And what this dojo build property says is that this app folder is a is a package, and that package is defined by the app.profile.js. So if we look at the app.profile.js, this is just uh, letting the dojo build system know that you know all the JavaScript files in here, they're AMD files, and they're going to define this package, which is cool. So what that means is that when we come over here, and so we have a source app folder is that the dojo config just has to say the dependencies for this application is the app main folder and that's the entry point so that app main folder gets the party started for building the application so we have a, a grunt task here uh, for release so um, what release does if we check this out so release is going to call default so it's going to build out the application the es6 files it's going to clean the release directory and it's going to uh, clean the built directory. So we do have a built directory, which is the intermediary between the distributed directory, which is just kind of the, the dump of all our files compiled and everything uh, from ES6 to regular JavaScript. And that built directory is going to contain the built Dojo application. But there's another step from there that we're going to do where we're going to uh, run this uh, some process HTML, CSS URL copy, uh, copy release, uh, copy release app, copy release blank. So you do a bunch of copying and uh, there's little tweaks here and there that are basically going to give you a deployable folder that you can use. So the way we do that is just going to stop the uh, server for now. We're going to do grunt release. And you want to use verbose well, you just want to use force. You don't need to use verbose. I will. But for now, use force because um, there's some little issues with the way the JavaScript API gets downloaded. We're using the Dojo build system. Some files aren't marked as being AMD when they really are. So you got to kind of force the build to go through. And this will get fixed at a later time. So just run this and you sit back, uh, go grab a coffee, uh, maybe take your lunch. <laughs> this takes a little while to do. Uh, running the dojo build so uh, I'll be right back
Okay, so the uh, release has gone ahead and uh, the task for the release has gone ahead and finished now. So if we look in our directory for the test app, uh, we have that built folder I was talking about. So this is the R app module along with, or the package, along with all the other packages that were uh, dependent on. And we also have the CSS file, uh, which I'll talk about in a second. We've got the build report, we have a cross domain, index.html, robot text file, which is all cool. And this is normally, uh, when you do your dojo build, you'd probably uh, deploy all of this into a, for your single application. Just because it's a lot easier to deploy it all uh, that way, because you've probably built your file as a single layer file in the dojo.js file, which is inside of dojo here. Uh, it's a pretty large directory. Uh, so that's normally how you would do it, but there's a grunt task built into the grunt file that comes with the yeoman generator that's going to go ahead and create this release folder. So what this release folder does is it copies the dojo.js file to this app.js file and it copies over the index.html file and there are no more live reload scripts in here. So it's very simple. You have an app container, you have a script tag, and notice there's no other links to any other libraries. And it's going to go ahead and do this really cool thing with the CSS. It's going to go through your CSS files and it's going to look at all of the URL resources that are in the CSS and copy them into this resources folder. So all the CSS resources for Digit are in here, as well as Dojo, Dojo X, and Esri. And even the blank GIF file, this was caused a little bit of error, so I had to create a little uh, grunt task to copy this uh, blank.gif in here as well. Typically don't need it. Uh, Dojo uses it for a couple of things. And that's all you need to deploy. So if we come over here, run grunt dev, and excuse my dog in the background over there. Probably chasing a cat. Okay, so this is the disk directory. And if we look at the number of resources coming down here, let's come to the network tab. Let's do it one more time. Okay, so here's our application. So yeah, in this case, we've downloaded every uh, JavaScript file that's used in our application as individual modules, right? It's because it's, it's unbuilt, basically, at this point in our distribution directory. So we had about 310 requests. And this is just for development. This isn't going to happen in your release. But when we release it, let's go ahead and uh, do this. That, that loaded up a lot faster. I'll do it one more time so we can see all the files coming down. All right, so let's just look at the uh, .js files. So we had 13 requests, 897k uh, gzipped. That's not bad for an application like this. Uh, just to get your map up and running. And this is with everything you need. And you notice it here, this app.js file is the largest file here. So actually it was like that I'm not even sure what that's going to be. Uh, 897k uh, gzipped is probably a lot smaller than 897k. Uh, I didn't check that part. But again, this is uh, all you need to deploy. So you don't have to worry about uh, copying over all those extra files. You just deploy this uh, one folder with the app.js, app.css, index.html and resources folder, and you're all set. So I hope that helps you out. Uh, try out the generator, uh, post any issues you might have. Uh, it's still you know, in progress, so some things, there might be some breaking changes down the line, but if it's a breaking change, I'll just up the uh, version number, so you won't have to worry about it. Okay, thank you.